You know, I, I went through the uh, 2008 downturn. Actually, I was brought into a bank to help them clean out their balance sheet. I, I was lucky enough to have sold my portfolio in 07. So it's definitely different this time. But how does the foreclosure process work this time? For, in, meaning in the sense that the decisions that banks make, if this is something that is beyond the normal run of events, why even are banks considering foreclosures? Is it because they're mandated to once um, uh, loans go into a certain level of default? Uh, or, or is it because that the borrowers are fundamentally unsound or, um, you know, are, are, are not on a, a solid foundation in terms of the way they structured their capital stack in the beginning? In other words, is this just going to wash out weaker borrowers or like what exactly is going on with with banks and the way they look at foreclosing at the moment well a it's too early to sort of make broad generalizations every financial services institution is making their own decisions as it relates to allowing for forbearance um, or foreclosing on a loan that's in default um, i would put forth i've heard all sorts of distinct reactions as it relates to people asking for forbearance uh, from the next three months are on us. Just put your head down, be ready to go when this thing clears up and we're with you to, uh, you know, no, we're not going to give any leniency, no forbearance. If you want to default on your loan, you default on your loan. So it runs the full gamut. I would say that you have to keep in mind that this crisis is very distinct from the great financial crisis. In the great financial crisis, the banks were running scared from the very outset. It was a banking crisis. It was a liquidity crisis. Mm -hmm. We are not seeing any of that today. So the banks are exceedingly well capitalized. Um, they have plenty of liquidity. The Fed has flooded the market with liquidity. Um, the SBA loan program that started uh, a week ago, Friday is already, it, it's, they say it's gonna be depleted by this coming Friday. Um, that's $350 billion that the federal government has put into small businesses across the country to allow them to keep their payroll, payrolls going. And 75% of those loans can be used for payroll. And that 75% is all forgiven if you use it for human resource costs during this downturn. So the, the, the immediate reaction in 2008 was a complete freezing of liquidity. Um, people pulled in warehouse lines, people called every repo line they had. And if you went to a bank and asked them for any kind of leniency, it was essentially, here's the hand, give me my money or you're in default. That is 180 degrees away from where we are today. Maybe I should say it's 170 degrees because there are some people who are saying, I need your money. I'm calling your line. I'm calling your loan. Don't talk to me. But it's a very different approach today. I think the big question is this week is when people are starting to really think about, okay, we were in kind of free fall for three weeks. The virus was hitting. It was growing dramatically. We were all scared for our lives. We were scared for our loved ones. And it was a real crisis of companies adapting to the new norm of either shutting down or like Walker and Dunlop sending everyone home and saying, we got to keep working, but we can do it in a remote basis. Then all of a sudden last week, when you started seeing that we seem to be flattening the curve and getting to peak demand for medical services in New York City, everyone said, huh, well, maybe this isn't going to go as deep as we thought. Maybe we're all not going to die. And um, let's start to think about the potential upside. And so you had this great kind of euphoria of the storm isn't going to be quite as bad as everyone expected. And we actually can start to think that it's going to pass. And so the market's inflated up again. Now the question is sort of, what do we do next? How long does it take for us to get out of this? How long is it going to take for the economy to get back up and get going? And until that question is answered, everyone who has a commercial real estate asset doesn't really know how deep the crisis is going to be and when they're going to start to get back to, if you're a, you know, if you're a retail mall owner, when are people going to come back to your mall? Can you project that 50% of your activity is going to be back in September? I don't know. Can you project 75% in September? Probably not. 25% in September, that's a totally different calculus. Um, if you're in the hospitality space and you own some big hotel in a major urban center, um, how many of your conferences have been canceled? How much travel do you think that someone like, I mean, I spend 
200 days a year on the road. When do you think Willie Walker is going to start traveling again? I don't know. Can't, I can almost guarantee you I'm not going to be getting on an airplane in May. Maybe, maybe something will require me to get on a plane in May. But even if they call all, you know, all clear, why am I going to get on a plane? And if I do get on a plane, I'm probably going to fly out, do something, and come right back home. Well, why am I going to go stay at a hotel for the night, right? So I think one of the big questions here is, what's your projection of how long this lasts for? And then if you're the owner, how long do you keep feeding the asset? And if you're the lender, how long do you work as it relates to a forbearance period before you sort of say, okay, start paying? How much pain are you then passing on the owner? And when does finally capitulate and say, I'm out?